when we're at church, we always have these songs that say, Lord, I want to know you more. Lord, I want to go deeper into you. Lord, search me, know me, find me. Um, and we have the songs that are saying that God says, here I am, take me. And I feel that now that we're not in church, this is the time that we can absolutely explore. We can explore what God wants for us, what we want to be in Christ. Um, and we can actually go for it because there's no, there's nothing stopping us. You know, so if, what we want to do is something, I don't know, we want to sing and we want to learn to sing. We can learn to sing and we can sing to the glory of God. If we want to learn to play something, we can play to the glory of God. And we can find the things that we never really had time to do. And they all can be some arm of worship. That's what I see it. So if I'm in the garden and I, I have actually taken to gardening lately, um, I do try to take my family with me, but they always whinge about that. But when I'm in the garden, I'm there digging and I'm thinking, wow, God, look, I planted that and something's growing. And then I can say, look at God, look at what you've created in the ground. And I, I just use the time to, to thank God for even the blades of grass, the fact that I'm kneeling and I, I, I'm able to feel the grass and the fact that I can actually explore the dirt and I can actually grow to love the spiders and the, the slugs and everything else. And I worship God in his creation and about his creation. I think when, in, in March when we were confronted with COVID, I had a sense that God was in the mix. He was in, he was doing something. That is not to say that God was creating the, 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 the virus and the serious situation, but I felt that God was able to use the situation to do something completely different, completely other. And I had that, I had that feeling, I'm sure lots of people had that feeling that this was no ordinary time. This was something where God was going to show his hand and I had no idea how God was going to do that. And I still don't really understand what God is doing, but what I do know is that God said, I am able and I am always in control. I am never out of control. I never have, you know, hissy fits or anything like that. I am always in control. and. I was resting on that and I was, I was just wondering what he was doing. And so there was a sense of expectation in me. I did feel as if God was saying something is going to start registering for uh, black people um, and people of color. And it started with COVID. It started with the fact that it didn't take long for me personally to find out that people of colour were being compromised by the corona. I had family in America that got it straight away. I felt that God was in control, but I, I, and I just had to throw myself on him and see what he was going to do with this. And then straight after that, there was the, the George Floyd. And it just compounded because the question that I was hearing from people of colour before George Floyd was, do they not see that we are vulnerable? And do they not care? Do people in authority not care? And then the George Floyd thing happened and there was, it was just escalated. Like, we actually do matter. And I could see how God was using these situations to actually say, actually, hear me, you do matter. You matter as much as everyone else. It wasn't more than everyone else. It was as much as everyone. You do matter. And I am, I am using these events to put you on the, on the stage, to put you there so that people can actually see whether they want to or not, that this is, you are important. I think God is calling the church to be more in his image, 
than the way, the image that we have created over time. And his image is the person on the street. His image is the baby in crying in the cot. The mother who's wringing her hands because she doesn't know how to feed her children. His image is the person, the person on the, at the board table trying to make a change and make a difference. Um, I think God would like us to get out of the four walls of the church and actually become church to the four corners of the world so that we actually address all the things that touch his heart and speak of compassion and and pain and joy peace and calm and actually i think to be church today is definitely to be a people who shed or divest ourselves of, of what we understand church to be and to become the church of the unchurched and listen to what they say they need, listen to what they want to find. When I became a Baptist, one of the main observations I saw was that the Baptist Union does not empower its young people. It doesn't empower the members. You have the person at the front and then you have this man or this woman speaking to the congregation. And every week I would say to my husband, yeah, but there's no interaction. There is no, there is no growth from the, from the pews. And my Bible tells me that we are all meant to be learning and progressing and going up higher and aiming for more. And I didn't see the more then. I saw the sermon and I saw the minister bringing the prayer and I saw the, you know, all the things that happens at the front. And I'd always say to my husband, who is a Baptist minister? Yeah, but your first port of call is to feed your congregation so that they can feed other people. That is, that is the process. It is not to just stay where you are and allow them to just be fed by you. And that was 22 years ago. And I would say the process of empowerment is so slow in coming. Because even today, if things are to be done, the, f the first thing the Baptist Union does is look towards the ministers. Yet we have social workers, we have youth um, um, leaders, we have teachers in the ranks in all the pews, you, you go through the length and breadth of Britain and you will see Baptists who have lots to offer. They have, they have um, professions that are way beyond the pulpit. And I would say if the Baptist Union is to progress and to be relevant, it has to recognise that some of the greatest people are the ones sitting in the pews and they need to be grafted in to the top table to actually say this is what we we can offer as well and let's see what happens if we start to acknowledge that you know everybody is relevant